It's me, Nimsoni. A while ago, I made um, a bunch of videos showcasing the Remod Physics sandbox that I was making. It's basically a remake of what Gmod is. Um, and in there, I'd built a model importer. I'd used one of the asset store um, object importers, which you can actually see in this project here. Uh, this is not just a, it's not sort of a project, it's just a test. I was trying to get some code working here. And the way that the model importer worked was that it would actually build a prop class that I'd built, a custom prop that had a bunch of stored stuff uh, with things like buoyancy and uh, other things like that, the friction and mass stuff all, all in there. And it would actually look at the OBJ files in the project folder, which you can see here. So there was, there was an add-ons folder and on inside the add-ons there was a props folder and inside there you could have all your OBJ files. But it would look at any files in there which uh, had stored all the data, uh, giving it mass and everything like that. And it would load the OBJ file for each of those innies, creating a prop. The physics on them, the colliders were built from the exact shape that was um, that was imported. Really bad way of doing things because, of course, in Unity we're using the physics engine. So that means that we can't use concave colliders on a physics rigid body. That was a problem because obviously my object importer would only import one object from an OBJ file, all as one mesh. Uh, so here I've made some modifications, in fact I've uh, got an updated version of this uh, ob model importer and I've modified that slightly. Um, and what it can do here is it can take all of the objects inside the object OBJ file and create a bunch of colliders from it as well as the mesh. So it's based on the names in the file. Uh, there are call file uh, call names and mesh names inside the file and you can see here on the left hand side that when I select one and open it up you can see ring has a mesh and a bunch of calls. Let's have a look in the scene view and you can see that it does have a bunch of calls. In fact I'm going to pause the game and then move the calls out of the way and you can see here this the, the actual colliders themselves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, blah, 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 16. All 16 of them um, completely separate. So I just took the original mesh and just separated it into a bunch of colliders. The good thing here is obviously each one is a convex shape, but within the middle we have a ring of, you know, hollowness. So if I undo and just move them all back to where they belong, close that up and unpause the game. What we can do here is if I place my little circle there and spawn one there, you can see it does actually hook together. So we do have actual concave colliding objects here. And these are all imported from OBJ files outside of the game. So here's the OBJ files that I've got. We've got a boat, um, a weird box shape that I made just to test it, and a stand, which I'll show you here. So if I click on the stand button here and just spawn one, click, there we go. And now you can see that the rings do actually attach to that. I can smack it with another one and that just smacks it over. And of course, here we've got actual rings, which can just be spawned and stack all on top of it. Boing. Now everything that gets spawned right now, this is just a test project, is actually getting the same mass. So, you know, smacking that with the same thing is obviously going to tip it over after a bunch of hits. And then of course we've got a boat. Boing. And you can see that when that is uh, stacked on top of each other, it is actually also a compound collider. So you've got colliders for each of these pieces here. One, two, three. You've got a collider for the back, a collider for the base, a collider here, there, and two on the sides there. And of course that means if we click here, you can see how the rings do actually spawn correctly. There we go. And they do sit inside the colliders here. Um, a little bit messed up on that one there but they do work. So here we've got a nice open box shape and you can see I can fill that up as well. There we go, a nice stack. Yeah, I'm quite quick at clicking. <laughs> and you can see it's actually importing each time I click rather than storing them in a cache, which is obviously the worst way to do it. The actual project was storing them in a cache, um, but yeah, this is not. This is just really quickly done, you know, a couple of hours just uh, fixing everything together and doing a quick a quick set of models. But yeah, this is just an, an idea that I had. Obviously the actual game will probably not even use OBJ files because they really are limited. I mean, inside those files you can't even store, you know, dummy objects with transform positions and rotations. 
and that's quite irritating because that means I can't do custom weapons and stuff that have just all of the information in that one object and that makes it sort of completely pointless that's a bit it's a bit broken that I might be switching over to the DAE format and uh, hopefully I can do quite a bit with that because I know that that format does have a lot of uh, extra things it, it can even do skinned mesh renders apparently skinned meshes which is which is incredible so that would allow me to go full whacking and, and actually build a full set of things that I can do from from models there and uh, I've been working a bit on trying to get skimmed meshes actually to work and uh, sort of generate them from from uh, from code it turns out as well that unity's own prefabs you can actually modify them and they will stay modified for the rest of your project not the most useful thing but yeah you can break unity's prefabs so you can take for example a box here which spawns and you can actually <laughs> modify box prefab and by default then if you spawn one in unity it will um, it will spawn as what you edited and in fact I'm gonna show you here if I make a copy of the ring and then we rerun the game you can see it does actually spawn it does actually load that new ring here oh, that's actually a scrollable thing I forgot about that so if in fact if I modify this ring here so I'll just uh, take one of the vertices and move it out and then spawn that ring you can see it has actually got the modified corner I'm gonna reset that and I'll spawn it and you can see it's pretty much instant as soon as I change the mod model itself you know I can zero out one of those and spawn it and you can see now it's got a hole because that that vertice is going right into the center so it, this is happening instantly so you could literally mod your game and you know edit your models on the go on the fly it's just it's instant when it imports so obviously I'll make like an editor or something for the actual game but this whole video was all about just sort of a, a new way to just sort of spawn um, cap uh, compounded colliders from files from external files and uh, that was the idea anyway that's the end of this video goodbye